Far from being a simple, round, spinning object, the component parts of a wheel combine to affect weight, aerodynamics and the overall performance of a bike. Over time, changes in technology, materials and testing have meant that science, and those at the forefront of bicycle manufacturing, have never stopped reinventing the wheel. The wheel is the, the, the key element between the, the bike and the ground, and especially the tyre. The component parts of a wheel are the rim, the spoke nipples, the spokes, and at the centre, the hub. In their separate parts, they're not strong at all. Once they're laced into the pattern of a bicycle wheel is when they become a truly strong, cohesive unit. The first wheels were in wood. The second generation of wheels were in steel, but super heavy. And the next step was the integration of aluminum. But the aluminum has characteristics that can be interesting for making hubs. But for example, it took us years to achieve aluminum spokes. The evolution of the spokes from the struts of the wooden and iron wheels to the spokes under tension in later wheels was also a significant development. Frenchman Eugene Mayer invented the wire spoke tension wheel in 1869 for use in the high wheeler bicycle. Wheels using such spokes under tension were lighter and gave greater comfort to the rider. Wheels have changed Im immeasurably. I mean, okay, they're still round, that's about it. When I first started, they were pretty much um, what we used to call a box, box section aluminium rim with 32 spokes generally. Then carbon fibre hit the market, um, initially in the frames, and once they'd developed it enough, it was introduced to the wheel technology. Carbon fibre is the lightest material that you can build a rim from whilst maintaining all the requisite strength. All those materials uh, brought evolution, brought uh, interesting uh, aspects, but uh, each one of them has good side and bad side in terms of characteristics. They can be used for some parts, but not all the parts um, to make a complete wheel set. With regard to characteristics, early steels were strong, but prohibitively heavy. Aluminium was lighter and a good material for making hubs, but was technically more challenging when used to make spokes, as it would crack when bent. Carbon fibre is light and can be used to make very developed shapes, but is expensive and a compromise in terms of durability. Understanding the role each wheel plays individually and collectively on the bike, and the forces involved in performance has been crucial in the evolution of wheels. The front and rear wheels of a bicycle are very often constructed in different ways because they have different jobs to do. If you improve the, the performance of the front wheel, you will uh, improve the performance of the complete bike. The rear wheel is concerned with driving the bicycle forward, and that has a rotational force generated from the hub, obviously where the chain goes around the cogs. So you're generating a twisting movement from the centre of the wheel, at the same time as the rear wheel bears the brunt of the weight of the rider, so it has to be stronger in different ways. The front wheel of the bicycle has to deal with different twisting forces under steering and braking, but it doesn't have to bear so much of the weight of the bike, so it can be lighter. Reducing the weight to create lighter wheels became the focus of wheel component production and overall design. In time, this focus would lead to the introduction of vital new materials adapted for use from other industries. When you reduce the weight of rotating mass, it is something in the region of four times as effective as reducing the weight of static mass. A lighter weight rim will accelerate faster than a heavier rim, so you need lightweight components to make up that rim. The only downside of that is a compromise to strength. You have two weights in a wheel, the, the, the wheel itself, the mass, and the rotating mass. You can have also a super light wheel set that will be very interesting to ride when you go uphill. But when you are on a level surface, you will need to push on the pedals very regularly to keep the momentum because there's no inertia. If you lace together a wheel in what is referred to as a radial pattern, so 
they fan out like the fingers on my hands, that no two spokes cross over each other. You will ultimately create a stiffer and lighter wheel. A lot of wheels are laced together in such a way that we have spokes effectively crisscrossing each other. One spoke will be under compression while the other is under tension and that will help to distribute the forces evenly throughout the wheel. All this has to be considered and in the end also the wheels get to be affordable and serviceable. The introduction of lightweight carbon fibre into bicycle design along with new testing and scientific knowledge, revolutionised the sport. Aerodynamics became of paramount importance in the design of the wheel. Aerodynamics was already in our mind for a long time. It has accelerated in the past uh, 15 years. The first thing that cuts the air is your front wheel. So of course it's hugely important for aerodynamics. The drag is the, the force of the air to the rider. And to, to have a good aerodynamic system, the drag must be the lower as, uh, as possible. You count uh, the drag in grams, and sometimes it's two, three grams. And you got to improve this step by step, and it, it takes a long time. A, a lot of means, a lot of knowledge, a lot of uh, studies. You have two, two different ways to work on aerodynamics. You have the, the CFD. So this is uh, the computering fluid dynamics. So you are working on a computer. The other way is the wind tunnel. And for us, this is the easiest way because in the wind tunnel, you put a prototype and you can measure precisely the, you can measure the drag. So we can pre-study a wheel set to define how many spokes we need to uh, absorb this distortion, this uh, stress and uh, what is the thickness of the rim walls and how many uh, holes we're going to put in and which angle. To reduce the drag, we have uh, working on the, the shape of the rim. So this, this shape has been optimized to reduce the drag. And we have also integrated the, the tire with a structure on the tire. And this structure is, uh, is very important to reduce the drag. And the last, uh, the last element is the blade, you can see here. This is a link between the rim and the tire. So when the airflow is coming, you have a very smooth uh, surface, uh, very continuous. We can stay uh, up to 400 hours during the year in the wind tunnel to validate things and to uh, change the prototypes to reach what we want to reach. We give also those prototypes uh, when the basic safety issues are solved to uh, end users. So from the very beginning, from an ID to the final product uh, on your bike, uh, you can have uh, from one year and a half to up to three, four years. It depends how much uh, innovation you have uh, included in the wheel set. One technological advance which has been made and developed in recent years is surface texture. In the same way that a golf ball has dimples on its surface in order to catch pockets of air, bicycle wheels have now started to integrate that technology. And if you look at some wheels, they'll have very shallow dimples across the surface. There is nothing more aerodynamic or slippery than air against air. With both weight and aerodynamics factoring into the design of a wheel, ultimately the defining criteria will depend on the end user and the event in which the wheel will be used. We define the criteria we need. If it's uh, first priority is the weight or the aerodynamics or the cost. You have to look at the event, you have to look at the weather conditions and you have to ask the rider what sort of feel they like and that's, that what, that's what gives you your ultimate choice of wheel. So what does the future hold for bicycle wheel technology and design? Now we're actually going back full circle on wheel aerodynamics again to saying that slightly increase the width of the rim but have a very small profile of the rim is more aerodynamic in real world situations than actually the original deep section rims that, that came out you know, 10 years ago. We can reduce, still reduce the drag of the bikes, of the wheels and of the other components. So I think that in the future uh, we will see the improvement of tyres and 
the, the integration between uh, tires and uh, wheels. The next uh, generation of wheels or bike components will be maybe in finding new materials. But the wheels will stay around and you will still have to push on the pedals to, to go fast. <laughs>